Hello everyone, welcome to our new project where we're building a website inspired by Instagram. We're using Next.js 14, Next Auth, Firebase, and Tailwind CSS to create it. With the new updates in Next.js 14, building websites has become simpler and quicker. In this tutorial, we'll walk you through each step. Firstly, we'll guide you on how to set up and organize the files and folders for our project using the Next.js app directory. After that, we'll dive into building our Instagram-like platform from the ground up with Next.js, NextAuth, and Firebase. But wait, there's more. We'll make our website visually appealing and similar to the original Instagram using Tailwind CSS. We'll also ensure our website loads quickly and maintains its appearance, even if there are any errors, all thanks to the new features of Next.js 14. As we progress, we'll explore more exciting features like allowing users to like any posts in the feed section, leave comments on any post they want, and add new posts with images and captions. We'll also design different components of the website to cater to our needs, whether it's optimizing for search engines with server-side rendering or enhancing user interaction with client-side rendering. After completing this tutorial, we'll deploy our project using Hostinger. Hostinger is the hosting sponsor of the channel, and I frequently create different projects using Hostinger as it is easy to use and has super fast servers. For this project, I'm opting for VPS hosting. If you choose the most popular VPS, you'll receive a remarkably generous amount of RAM, storage, and bandwidth. This means you can deploy all your projects on a single server. These servers are incredibly fast, thanks to their use of NVMe SSDs and one of the most powerful AMD processors available. Right now, there's an amazing offer. Don't forget to use the link provided in the description to access this offer and choose your time period. And if you want to enjoy an extra discount, simply use the coupon code SAHAND during checkout. Once you've made your purchase, you're ready to set up your server. Choose any location you prefer. We'll be installing a panel. It is going to be a cloud panel. Let's create a secure password and complete the setup. After this process, your server will be all set to deploy your apps. So let's proceed to create our application and deploy it onto our server. All right, I have provided the final version at insta.100jsprojects.com. You can come here, visit this final version and test it yourself. Be familiar with the website. So when you're creating it, you know what you're doing. I've also gonna explain some part of the project with the diagram and some bullet points using eraser.io. And I'm gonna share this link with you so you can have this diagram and the information I'm gonna provide during the project. So you can use this one for your own project and also you can extend that one if you wanna add more functionalities. So if you look at the final version, we can see we have a header here that is sticky at the top. With the search bar, we have this button for uploading. So when we click on it, we see a pop-up window so we can upload our image, put a caption and also upload the post. Let's try creating a post here. So I'm gonna choose an image here, for example, this one. As you can see, it's uploading after you choose the image to the Firebase, and then we can just create a caption, for example, nice view. And once you click on upload post, this post is going to be added to the database and you can see it at the top here inside the feed section. So here in each post, you can see we have a header, the image, we have the caption. You can like the post, you can unlike it. You can see the number of likes here. So this is all real time using Firebase Firestore. So anybody else using the website is gonna see the changes. And uh, you can leave a comment, for example, nice. Once you press enter, you can see the comment here, which is showing a few seconds ago. So with the username 
and the comments here. And also if you add more comments, for example, comment two, comment three, as you can see, this is gonna be scrollable. And the first, I mean, the last comment is going to be in the first in the list. We also have a mini profile here showing the user's image and username. You can sign out from here. When you sign out, you're gonna see that uh, we are not logged in anymore. So some of the functionality will be removed once there is no session. For example, we don't see the like functionality. And also the, you can just only see the comments. You, you are not allowed to leave a comment un unless you are logged in. So we can log in with another account. I wanna show you some of the features. Let me choose this one. So if you like now, you can see the number of likes are two. And also you can see we can leave a comment with another user. So we're gonna use next auth to handle the authentication. So next, next auth has some features. For example, we don't have the complexity of implementing the authentication. And also the end users benefit from options like social logins and passwordless signing. So another thing I have to mention is we are gonna use both client side and server side for this project. For example, this post image and the caption are server side. So this is going to be good for SEO. And some of the parts that needs interactivity like liking the uh, post is going to be client side. So I'm gonna show you how to have both server side and client side even inside the same component, which is this card component. So this is only gonna be achieved by Next.js app directory. So you're gonna achieve the benefits of server side rendering like search engines can crawl our website for best SEO. And also the initial page road is going to be faster. And also it's going to be great for static sites. So we're gonna show and practice both server side and client side components here. In the next section, we're going to install Next.js and Tailwind CSS and create the first template. And along with that, after that section, we're going to add the header component, which is the easiest part of the project. After that, we're gonna jump in for the authentication part and create our authentication using Next Auth. So see you in the next section for the installation of Next.js and Tailwind CSS. All right, in this section, we're going to install Next.js and Tailwind CSS and create our first template. So what we need to do is to just go to the Next.js website. We just go search for Next.js. So the website is nextjs.org. We click on get started. As you can see, for installation, we just need to go to this part on the left side. You can just click on installation. You just need Node.js 18.17 or later, so we can you can just check your Node.js and up, upgrade it if you have lower this, than this version. Then we're gonna use its automatic installation using mpx create next dash app at latest. So what we wanna do, I wanna create a folder. Uh, let's create it inside my folder called project. I'm gonna create a new folder. I call it insta-next. So what I need to do is to just drag this folder and put it inside Visual Studio Code. So I've opened the Visual Studio Code now. So let's just make this one smaller and just drag this folder inside this. So now this folder is the default folder of my next uh, my VS code as you can see from the top so I'm going to install everything inside this folder so I want to open the terminal here you just need to open it using control backtick or you can just go to your menu view and click on terminal here as you can see the shortcut is control backtick for me so here we are inside this folder. Make sure that it shows Instanex or whatever name you have chosen. And then here we're gonna paste the. Uh, uh, let me, uh, not this one. 
I think I didn't copy it yet. So we need just to copy this code. We click here and we come back and paste it here. So um, uh, when you click, uh, when you press enter, they're going to ask you first which project name you want to add. Because we already chosen the folder name, I just want to don't want to add any other folder. So in order to avoid creating a new folder, I just need to add a dot here, a period. And then we press enter. They asked me, would you like to use TypeScript? I said, no, S-Link. S-Link is going to help us to find the errors in our code. So I'm going to say yes. Would you like to have Tailwind CSS? Yes. So in the newest version, you don't need to install Next Tailwind CSS separately. So you, by just installing Next.js, you're going to have Tailwind CSS as well. So I'm going to press yes. Would you like to have SRC directory? So this is going to be an extra folder for our project. So, and then we're going to press yes. App router. So this is the newest uh, way to create pages in Next.js. So we're going to use that. We press yes. So, and then you want to have a different alias. Now I'm going to use the default one. So we just say no. And this is going to uh, create the project for us and install it. So let's review that one inside our eraser.io. So let me add the name here. So I'm going to add some text here. I just say Insta, Instagram clone. So let me increase the size. So what we want to do here. So first we have started our project. So we have started that. Let me decrease this size. And once we start, we have used let me just copy this. So we have used the npx create next app at latest. So I'm just going to add it here. So you don't need to go to different website for creating these projects. You have everything that we use inside this. So we just after the starting projects, we're going to have this one. So this is going to create some folders and files for us. So if you remember, we had a root folder. So let me add a folder here. So we have we have a root folder and in my case the root folder name was insta dash next. So this is going to be the root folder and everything will be created inside this folder for us. So let's connect this one to here. And after that we're gonna have different files and folders. If you remember we have chosen to have SRC folder and along with SRC folders, Next.js is going to create some other folders and files for us. For example, they're going to create a folder called public and also they're going to create some files. So let me add some files here. So they're, they're going to add some, for example, config files plus some JSON files. I'm going to explain you each file, what they do and what, what are what we need to do inside these files to have our application running smoothly. So what, what is the usage of these files? So the SRC is going to have our app folder and components folder and the public folder is going to have our public assets. Like for example, we have an image we want to add to our website or something that user can have access inside the browser. So we're going to add more files so this is going to be public files and this is going to be inside this public. So this is going to be inside this and we're going to have two more folders inside the SRC folder. So the first folder is going to be the app folder. So this is why we choose app router inside the Next.js. So we're going to have we're going to create all our pages inside this app directory. So let me just choose these three and create a figure. So this is going to be the root folder. Let's connect this one to this. So let's review what we have done. We have just installed it. We got some folder inside our root folder, public SRC and some files. The public folder is going to be for the pub public files. And then inside the SRC, we're going to have the app directory. So let me show you inside the projects. Now the installation part is completed. 
we can see the same structure here. So we have a public folder with some files here, which, which is going to be accessed with the users. And the users can easily download these files inside the browser. Then we have the SRC folder, which, is, which includes the app directory. So as you can see, inside this app directory, we have few files. Some files we don't need to be uh, one. The most important files are the page.js page or page.jsx. Doesn't matter, the extension. So we have layout and also we have global.css. Let me explain it here. So we're going to have three files here, which are very important. I'm going to add this one here. So let me add some file. So the first file is going to be global.css. So this is going to be our styling. The styling is going to be here. And if you look at inside the globals.css, you can see we have the base styling from Tailwind CSS and also some styles added automatically using Next.js utility. The another file we have is layout.jsx or layout.js. So this is going to be the template of our projects. For example, in the final version, you can see the header is always at the top. So if something you have that is common in all pages, you're going to add it to the layout.js. So this is for creating the layout. So something that is repetitive in your projects, you're going to add it inside this layout.js. And another file we have here is page.js or page.jsx. So this file is going to create our page here, the first page. So let's create the figure here. So this is going to be the app folder. So we're going to have all these files inside the app directory. So in order to have the home page, we're going to have this page.js. So let's add a website. Um, we need to search for browser. So this is going to be the home page, which is forward slash. So in order to create the home page, we need to change the things inside the page.js. So now I think you understand the structure inside the Next.js. So instead of, uh, for example, in React.js, instead of creating the routes, instead of installing a third party package like React Router DOM and etc., we just need to have a folder and file structure to create our pages. So if you come back to our Visual Studio code, now we can open our website inside the browser using, let me clear this first, npm run dev. This is going to open your website inside the local host 3000. You can just keep the command or control and click on this link. So this is going to open it for you. As you can see, we have our website in localhost 3000 that is created by the Next.js utilities. These are the templates they have provided. As you can see, by changing the page.jsx inside the app directory, inside the SRC folder, we can edit this page, which is our home page. So if you remember, we, I told you that home page is inside the page.js, inside the app directory, inside the SRC folder. So let's bring this one to the right side so we can do this, some clear this template. We don't need these things. We want to have our own website. So for changing our website, we need to go to page.js. So we're going to delete everything here and create our own website. So I'm going to delete everything. I want to use RFC to create a React functional component. I want to change this one to home. So if you cannot see RFC effects in your Visual Studio code, you need to add some extensions in your VS Code. So I'm going to show you which extension I'm using. So you're going to install it. So the extensions uh, that create RFC is ES7, React Redux, React Native Snippets. You just need to search it here in this box and then install it. Then we have the auto rename tag for just changing, for example, this div. I want to change it to H1, for example. When I change the opening tag, this is going to automatically change the closing tag. So this is for that auto rename tag. 
Then we have, uh, these are the paid uh, extensions. You don't need to install them. I'm gonna use them to uh, create the projects faster. For example, the GitHub Copilot is the AI pair programmer. When I'm coding, they're gonna suggest me some uh, possible coding. So I'm gonna accept or reject them. And then we have GitHub Chat Copilot that this is going to add a chat box here so you can ask about your code or you can just get ideas. It's like chat GPT, but inside Visual Studio code. Then we have the multiple cursor uh, case preserver. When you want to add different variables in one page, you can use this. So this is going to keep the capital letters in some variables. I'm going to show you how I use it in some cases. And then we have Prettier if you want to just automatically uh, format your code, you can install Prettier. And also we have Tailwind CSS IntelliSense, which is going to suggest us some int Tailwind CSS classes. So for example, uh, let's refresh the page. Now you can see that uh, our homepage is now just saying home. As you can see, we have some weird styling here. This is all because of the this global CSS styling. You can just remove everything except the first three lines. And this is going to remove all the styles that is automatically added by the Next.js utilities. So now we have, if you want to be sure that Tailwind CSS is working, you can just add a class name here. For example, text, red. So as you can see, if you press Ctrl space, they're going to suggest you some color palettes. This is all from the Tailwind CSS IntelliSense extension. So I'm going to choose, for example, this one. And if you see that your the color of the home is changed to red, it means the Tailwind CSS is working in your project. Otherwise, you have to just go back and do all the process again to find your mistake. So that was for the creating the first template. And other things we need to change, for example, in layout.js, as you can see, we have some metadata. For example, you have to, you can see that here we say, the title of the page is create next app. You can change this one by just changing here. For example, you can just say Instagram clone. You can see the suggestion from the GitHub Copilot. And also here, probably we get some suggestion. We can accept that. So we have created the title and description. And also we can see it by inspecting, going to elements, open this body. Now, sorry, in the head tag, we have some metadata. So one of them is going to be description, which is here. You can see that we have the content of the description. So Next.js is actually SEO friendly. So they're going to have all the features of the static website, like uh, adding the description, metadata tags, keywords, and etc. So if you want to have a website and you want it to be ranked very good inside Google, you need to use Next.js instead of React.js. And we're going to change these things later in the next section. But the next step we need to do is to add a GitHub repository for our project. We need this GitHub repository later for the deployment of our project. So, uh, And also, we're going to keep track of changes inside the website. So I'm going to go to github.com. Make sure you're logged in. This is totally free. You can use and here you click on this plus icon and create a new repository. I'm going to choose a name for that. For example, I just say Insta dash next. As you can see, it's available for me. The description, just say Instagram clone using next JS and Tailwind CSS. And you can keep it public or you, if you don't want other people to see your code, you can just make it private. I want to keep it public so you can have access to this as well. I'm going to add this one to the resource section of the project as well. So you can have access to it too. So we click on create repository. So this is going to give us some code so we can add in our projects to connect it to here. Next.js is going to automatically use these things for us. Get init, get commit, and etc. So we don't need to go to that part. As you can see, we already have some get here, if you go to source control, you can see we have some changes here. So what we want to do is to, uh, we can just stop the terminal and connect it to our GitHub repository. Let me clear this. 
So first we need to copy this line of code and paste it here. This is going to create a URL for our code. And then we're gonna add the branch and also we wanna push it to GitHub. So which, which means we're gonna upload it to GitHub. So this is going to upload it as you can see now. If you refresh the page inside the browser, we can see now our code is completely inside the, our GitHub repository. So the link is going to be this, github.com forward slash sandcavidel forward slash insta dash next. I'm gonna provide it in the resource section as well. And also we can see we have created one commit automatically by create next app. So the next commit we're gonna add ourselves. I'm gonna add everything here by pressing the plus icon and create a message for this commit. For example, I just say install next.js and tailwind CSS and create the first template. So this is going to be the title of this section as well. So anytime you have any problem in your code, you can just come to this GitHub repository, come to the commit section. You can see this section and then you just click on it and you see the changes that have done in this part. For example, we have deleted everything inside global CSS except these codes. And also in layout.js, we have changed the title and description. So anytime you have some problem in your code, you just come to the, sec the same section, the same commits. And then you just compare your code with this one, or you can copy paste some of the parts to find your mistakes. So in the next section, we're going to add the header components of our project. If you look at the final version, we can see in the header, we have logo and some avatars here, and it's completely responsive based on the changes in our website. So we're gonna add this header as a new component in our project. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed installing Next.js and Tailwind CSS, and we have created our first template. And also we have connected our project to the, our GitHub. In this section, we're going to work on the header uh, component. So as you can see from the final version, we have a header here with the Instagram logo, which is going to be different when we have different size. As you can see, we, when we reach to this size, we get that uh, different logo. And here, as the person is logged in, we see the image of that. But if you log out, we should see a different things. Here, we just see the login button. So in this section, as we don't have authentications yet, we can just create this login, the search box and the logo. And then in the next section, when we are applying the authentication, we can update our header in that time. So if you check the, our eraser here, we can see that we have some files. We have created the page, homepage using the page.js. Now we wanna have some components. The components folder is going to be inside this SRC folder. So we're gonna have a different folder called components. And this folder is going to include, so these two, are going to be inside the, uh, let me choose both of them. So this is going to be the SRC folder and we're gonna have some files inside this component. So, so the first one we're gonna create is header.jsx. So this is going to be the header component and then we wanna, what we wanna do here, we wanna actually add this header inside the layout. So we're gonna have this header in all pages in our project. So we're gonna, if we need to add a component in every every level, every pages of our projects, we need to add it inside the layout.jsx. So let's do this. So inside the Explorer section, we wanna inside the SRC, we wanna create a folder called components. And inside this folder, we're gonna create a file called header JSX. Let's create a React functional component and add this one to the layout.js, which is here. So as you can see, everything goes inside this body section from this using these children. What we want to do is upper these children, we want to add the header. So 
I'm gonna import it. Let's auto import it. So as you can see, we get a suggestion here from the components folder. So it's added at the top here. Let's close this. Now, if we check our website, the final version here, we can see that, uh, let's refresh the page. Okay, now the server is not on. So let's use npm run dev to run the server again. Let's refresh the page. As you can see, now we have the header on top of the home page. If you go to other pages, we should see the header as well. We don't have any other pages except the home page for now. So let's bring this one to the right side. So what we want to do, we want to like the final version, we're going to have this logo, the search box and this login here. And we're going to have a different logo based on the size of the screen. It's very simple to apply that using Tailwind CSS. So let's close this one so we can see everything better. Let's remove that. We go to the header.jsx and let's start creating our header here. So inside this dev, we're going to have another dev because one is for making the header sticky and one is for aligning the items inside that. So inside this one, we're going to have the left side, which is the logo. So we just say logo. After the logo, we're going to have that search input. And then finally, we're going to have the menu items or the item we have. So the, for the logo, we want to have uh, the link tag because as we click on the logo, we're going to go to the home page. So in order to navigate between places in Next.js, we have something called link from next forward slash link. And the href for this one is going to be forward slash. So let's close this. And inside the link, we're going to have our logo image. So I have two images actually. So inside my images folder, I have these two uh, images which is the Instagram logo I've downloaded from the internet you can just search on the internet and find these images or come to the github repository of this uh, project and just download it from my github repository so I'm going to copy these things and then we go to our projects folder I install next and what we want to put is this public if you remember I I just mentioned that this public folder is for the public files and which can be accessed by the users and easily they can see it. So let's bring this one to the right side. I'm going to put everything inside this public folder. Let's delete these things. We don't need them anymore. So let's delete them, move them to the bin and then we paste these two images. So inside the Visual Studio code, we can see now these two images. Okay. And now I want to use these images to create the logo. Okay. So we want to use the image tag of the Next.js. So the image tag is going to optimize the image for us. So it comes from the next forward slash image. So for the image tag, let's close it first. We need to have an SRC here with the address of this public folder because it's a public folder we don't need to add anything to that for example the address or something we just say forward slash the name of that uh, image for example i can just rename this one and then copy everything and then paste it here also uh, we don't need these brackets actually so these are the source for the image tag we need to add width and height so let's for let's add width of 96 and height of 96. I want to make it square. Now we can see the image here. And what else I want to add is the alternative. Uh, or actually, I for the first one I want to add this image, not this one. So this one goes here. I want to see that image, not that one, because the size was different. So for the alternative one, we can just say uh, Instagram logo. Okay. So now we have this Instagram logo. What we want to do is to see this one only the, in the big screen. So I want to add some class name here. So we want to make it hidden in the mobile size. And then in the large size, 
I want to make it inline flex, which is bring it back. So we don't see the logo now, but when we have a bigger screen, we see that logo, as you can see now. We want to do the opposite for the other logo. So I'm going to copy this using Alt Shift down arrow. We just changed the logo. I just want to get the name here. Let's close this and add it here to the second one. So we should see it now. Let's refresh the page ah, because it's hidden now. So this one should be opposite. So in the large screen, we want to make it hidden. But in the normal screen, I want to keep it like that. So now you can see it, but in the larger screen, we just see the Instagram instead. And also, uh, so we don't need this large inline because uh, the default is showing it in the mobile size. And then for the width and height, I want to set this one to 40. Okay. So now we have this logo and then we have the other logo. So that's it for the logo part. Next part is making the search box. So that's very simple. We just need to add an input here with the type of text. And then we want to just add a placeholder saying search. And then we just style it a little bit. You can see it here. So the styling for I want to use for this one is background color of gray 50. Let's add a border. Let's add, let's make the border color to be gray. 200 and then let's make it rounded in the corners and then just very simple text to be small we want to set the width to be full we want to add a padding in the y-axis of two and the padding in the x-axis of four so now you can see it's an old screen but we can just set the max width to be 210 pixels okay so that's the input, as you can see. It's very simple and similar to the Instagram one. For the menu, I just told you that we just want to add the login for now. And then later, we're going to add the other things. So this is going to be a link tag, which is going to refer to... This is going to be signing page, but as we don't have authentication, actually, we don't need to think about that now. Uh, actually, we don't need to link actually because in authentication, next off gives us the ability to just go to the signing page by adding a signing function. So we just add a button here. And for the button, we just want to say login. And we just add some simple styles here, like text to be a small, font size to be semi bold, and we just change the color to be text blue 500. So you can see it now. Now we have created the logo search box and the menu. I want to just um, bring them next to each other, make them uh, aligned by just adding a flex here. And then we want to add justify between. So we add a equal space between them. And then we want to make them bring them to the center using item center. And we set it to be max with the max width of, because in the bigger size, they are just connected to the wall. I wanted to have some space here. So we set the max width to be 6XL. So we have this space, but we don't have the space that size. So I want to bring them to the center using MX Auto. Okay, now it looks better. And then for the top div, we want to, Add a sh some shadow here, shadow of small. So you see the shadow here. I want to add some border at the bottom as well. We want to make it a sticky. A sticky means when you have other items like the final version, it's still you see the top header. So I want to make it a sticky at the top. If you want to make it a sticky at the top, you have to add the top zero as well. And also we want to make the background color to be white and we want to bring it to the top so we change the z index to zero because z index of everything is one when you make something zero uh, 30 it means it goes on top of other things and also we want to add some padding here padding of three 
I think it's okay now. So that's it for the header section. In the next section, we're going to add the authentication using next auth and modify the header based on the authentication status of the user. So let's add this one to the GitHub. So what we want to do here, we just want to click on this plus icon and then add a message. For example, add header component. And we can just commit and push. And once again, I tell you, you just can come to this GitHub repository and just see the new commits. And based on the name of this and name of the section of the video, you can just compare your code and other things. And uh, if you need these images that I've added, so these images, you can just download them here as well. So you can download them. I think you can click on view file and then you can just download it by just using save image as you download it to your own computer. Okay, that's it for creating the header section. In the next section, we're going to work on authentication part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the header section of our project. In this section, we're going to install next auth and then we're gonna apply the authentication using this package. So there are some benefits of using next auth. Let me just make it clear here. So in, and then you can use this one later for yourself. Let's add some text here. So we're gonna show the benefits of using next auth. So the first benefit is going to be reduce so it's going to reduce the complexity of implementing authentication. What I mean by that is, if you wanna implement authentication yourself, if you watch my previous videos on MERN authentication, you, you know that we have to learn about the cookies, how to set cookies inside the browser, how to manage them, and how to detect if the person is authenticated or not. We need to create a page like sign-in page for the user. But using NextAuth, these are going to be handled by NextAuth package by just adding them to our project. And also they're gonna apply the global state for the user so we can have access to the authentication in everywhere in our project. For example, we can have the our authentication in the header, we can have it in the mini bar. We can see it here. For example, here when we want to leave the comments, let, let me log in first. So as you can see, this page is even created by next off. I didn't create this page. I didn't add this button. So it's going to make our life much easier when we are using the next authentication. So now we are having access to this a profile, this username everywhere, we can use it here. So it's using the global state under the hood. So we don't need to worry about installing packages like Redux or other things. So the first benefit was reduce the complexity of implementing the authentication and also the end users benefit from options like social media so social media logins you can add many logins functionality like adding google github facebook and etc it's it's a lot of them so any any social media login you can have it in next off without being worried about that and also we're gonna have the pass word less sign in okay so these are the benefits of using the next off. I'm going to show it, show it now in our application. The first thing we need to do is to install this package in our project. So the package we need to install, let me just search for it so you can see. So we search for next auth. So next auth or the new way to call it is auth.js. It's uh, both is the same. So for installation, we just need to install next auth and we need to add it in our application by adding it inside the uh, 
I'm going to show you how to add it in Next.js. You can see it here in the Next.js. Uh, this, uh, actually, this website is not updated. You can come to the next off and go to the get started and you can just install it for Next.js. As you can see here, we need to install it. Uh, the next dash off, let me install it first. So let's stop the server. Let me clear this. So we're going to paste this one and install next off. After that, we're going to have this file with this name, next off.js inside the bracket with these three dots. And this file is going to create our options. As I mentioned before, you can have GitHub, you can have Google and etc. So you just need to have your provider and add it here. And then we want to add the session provider. So it's a bit different in the next. This, this is for version 13. For version 14 and above, it's a bit different. I'm going to show you how to do it. So after the installation is completed, we need to create a file. If you remember, I said we want to create a file called next off. But in Next.js app directory is a bit different. We need to create a file inside the app directory. We create a new folder called API. It should be lowercase like this. And then inside this, we're going to have another folder called auth. Then we're going to have another folder with this name, dot, 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 inside the bracket, next, dash, auth and then inside this folder we're gonna have a file called route.js as you can see it's a bit different from the one shows in the this version which is the old version and then we're gonna have these options i'm gonna go just copy these things and paste it here but instead of using github provider i'm gonna use the google provider so this is going to be google let me just uh, choose everything and then change it. So this is going to be Google. And so we need to get actually a client ID and the client secret for the Google provider. So we need to go to the Google console and get these informations. And instead of this export default, I want to uh, use this one export handler as get and also we want to have handler as host okay so we're going to export these two because we need to have the get and post both of them for our application and uh, here instead of exporting the auth option we want to have the constant and the constant name is going to be handler equals to next off which is coming from here so these are going to be the handler and then we want to export this handler here so these are provider this is google provider let me check if it we are missing something so that's fine i think we need to have another parenthesis here and then so we could close it here and then we have this one and also here we're going to have a parenthesis. Okay, now it's fine. You can just pause the video and completely check this one. Also, this is going to be available inside the GitHub repository. Now we need to go to the Google console to get these uh, informations. Google ID, Google secret. So let's go to Google and search for console. Google, let me see this website console.clock.google.com when you go there you just choose your associated email for me it's uh, this one and then you're going to create a new project so you just just click on here and then here click on new project and then i'm just want to call it insta dash next and then we click on create so this is going to create it for us. After the creation, we need to go to top left, click on API and services, and we go to credentials. Make sure you choose the new project. Sometimes it goes back to the previous one. And then you need to create new, uh, create the credential. And here we click on OAuth client ID. 
So first thing first, they want to ask us to configure our con consent screen. So first you need to configure that one. So we click on that. And then here it said, what sort of uh, application is this? Is it internal, external? So external other, any users can use it. So we click on external. We just click on create. And here we just choose the application name to be Insta, for example, next for me. Email, I want to choose my email. We don't have a logo, but you can add your logo. You can add your domain and etc. So for the domain, for now, because we are using localhost 3000, we can just add that one here. And then authorized domain, you can add that one here as well. So the invalid domain must not specify. So we don't need to add this part. So I think that's fine. Must not specify the schemes, invalid domain. I think we need, uh, we don't need to add it now. Later we're gonna add it. So I'm gonna delete this one. So the email is going to be the same email. And then we can just click save and continue. Okay, so now this one is created. We just click save and continue, save and continue, back to the dashboard. Okay, so we go back to credentials now. Now we click on create credentials, auth, OAuth client ID. The application is a web application. The name is Insta Next. And then we just create it now. Later, they're going to give us an error, but later we're going to handle it and come back and fix this one. But now we have our client ID and client secret. We can just copy it and add it to our environmental variable. So we copy this one. We go back to Visual Studio Code. We want to create an environmental variable inside the root folder, not inside the SRC. So we just say new file. Uh, let me check a new file dot env. And then if you remember, we had this process that env that Google ID. I want to add that one. And uh, this is going to be equal to this client ID. I copy it, paste it here. And then we want to have that Google secret, which is going to be this one. I don't know, I call it secret. Let me check. Google secret, yeah, that's fine. Two more things we need to add actually. One is next of secret, which is just a random number or something you need to add. And also the next of URL, which is this localhost 3000. So just remember to add these things as well. The next step is to cover our application with the session wrapper. So as this uh, next off is using the global state, we need to add that and wrap the application with that. But if we add this next off in the, inside the layout.js, this is going to make our application all client side because it's use uh, something called hook. And you cannot use hook inside the server side. So what we can do to prevent that is to create another component, make that one client side and then add that component inside the layout.js. So let me show you what I mean by that. So inside the components, I'm going to add another file called session wrapper.jsx. So here we want to add that, uh, have that session wrapper. If you remember inside the next off, we need to wrap everything with this session wrapper. But as I mentioned, as we are using some hooks, we cannot add it inside the layout.jsx. So we want to add this one in that session wrapper and put the session wrapper inside that. So similar to this one, I want to create. So let's create it ourselves. We don't need to rely on, on that. So we just say, because this is a client side, we just say use client at the top. And then first thing first, I want to import session provider this is coming from next dash off forward slash react and then we want to also create a constant called session wrapper uh, which is going to get the children because we want to wrap everything and add the information inside so we get the children here and then we're going to return the session 
provider and inside the session provider we're going to add the children uh, let's close this return and export this session wrapper so now this component is client side and then we want to add this one to the layout.js but layout.js is going to be server side so this is the way this is the benefit of using next.js app router so we're going to have some parts uh, server side some parts client side working together without any problem so inside the layout.js we want to add this session provider so we're going to add it at the top so that session wrapper that we have created we're going to import that close this and then we're going to bring it and cover everything here so now we can use actually our uh, next off in our application so how do we use it for example in the header.js we want to show the image of the person that is coming from or when we click on this button the login button we want to go to the sign in page so in the button i want to add some unclick event listener uh, which is going to call that sign in for us so what we want to do is import that sign in at the top so what we want to add is the sign in from next up forward slash off so once we import that we can just call it here you can call it like this sign in you need to call that so let's try now so in our application now if you click on login we should go to the that login page so when we click on it let's refresh the page oh, it's not working because the server is down so let's run the server again we reload the page oh, we are getting some errors here so let's wait until completely we, our page is loaded so inside the where is the error coming so as you can see because we are adding on click event listener it's getting us an error saying event handlers cannot be passed to uh, can uh, to the client components props so as i mentioned before the default behavior of the next.js app directory is making the component uh, server side but in the server we cannot add an on click because that is a server but we are clicking in the client side so this is making some error so we need to make this header client side so we just say use client so anytime you see this kind of error you know that you are using something that is not allowed in the server side so that fix our error and let's click on logging now so we are getting an error here there is a problem with the server configuration check the server logs for information so this error is saying that we need to check the server logs in our uh, terminal so here we have the error now it says they cannot find next of .js something uh, i hear i think i made a mistake here we just renamed this one and uh, there's no dash here so this is gonna i think fix the problem let's try again when we come back let's click on login now we went to the sign in page as you can as i mentioned before we didn't create any of this page or logo or something it's all created by the next off package but when we click on this signing with google we should get an error from the google site because we haven't specified this uh, redirect as you can see we got the error 400 redirect you are mis mismatch so if you click on this error detail we need to copy this redirect url from here and add it to our google so this credential inside the google cloud you just need to edit this and add the redirect url here and uh, i think for the original we don't need to add anything but if they get an error we need to add the localhost 3000 here so let's try again okay we come back we refresh the page we click on login click on sign in with google now it's working we now it's asking us to choose one of our gmail accounts so for example i choose this one when i choose this one and click on continue this is going to come back to the uh, home page but if you inspect now we go to application and we go to the cookie you can see now the next off added a cookie inside our 
browser. So this is a, just a hashed code, includes our username, email, and uh, profile image. And also inside this uh, local storage, they added some other things here, as you can see, session. So we can get the information like email and etc. using this uh, session. Let me show you what I mean by that. So inside the header, so now I want to add some, for example, image or other things. So what I want to do here, I want to import session as well, use session. This is a hook. And then we need to just get the data from the use session. And I want to call it session instead of data. Okay, it makes more sense. And then let's console log this session. I want to show you what we have inside this session. So if you console log session and we go to browser and we go to console, you can see we get an object with the user data like email, image, and also the name of the user, which is here. Now we want to use this image and show it instead of this button, this login button. So we can make a condition here inside the uh, header. So instead of just showing this button, I want to say, if there is a session, so if the person is authenticated, show an image, otherwise show this button. So I'm gonna create a condition here. And inside the second one, I wanna add this button. Okay, so let's see, oh, okay. We have to complete this one first. So here, we wanna have an image showing that user image. So we can get it from session.user.image. An alternative is going to be the username, for example, session.user.name. So let's see what we get. Now we get the person's image, okay? So because we are authenticated, uh, let me show you. If I remove the cookie now, so if we go to application, we go to cookie, and we delete this cookie, and then we refresh the page, we don't see the person's image, we just see that login button. Let's sign in again with different person, for example, this email. Now we see this image. So now let's quickly style this. And also when we click on this image, I wanna log out as well. So here inside this, I wanna get this logout as well, which is sign out. And then this image that we have used here, Let's style it real quick. For example, I want to make the height to be 10, width to be 10, and then we want to make it rounded full, which is going to be a circle, rounded full. And we want to make the cursor to be pointer when we hover over it. And when we click on it, I want to log out. So I want to just say on click. When we click on it, I want to sign out. We can call it if we are not passing anything. Also, this one, we can just remove these parentheses as well. This is a different way of calling a function. So now, if we click on this one, we're going to log out. As you can see, we're going to log in again. Now we see a different image. So that's it for adding the authentication and modifying the header component. Let's add this one to the GitHub. As you can see, now we have the .env file uh, which is not good. We don't want to add this one to the GitHub repository because everybody else can see our Google authentication. So what we need to do is to go to the git ignore file here and add the .env as well. So now if you check, we can see that we don't have the .env anymore here. So now it's safe to commit our changes, which is going to be add next of and modify the header component. So we can commit and push. So in the next section, we wanna move on and add this pop-up functionality. We wanna install a package called React Model. We can easily add this pop-up, which is very convenient. When we click on outside, they're gonna close the pop-up or add this button. So first we wanna focus on this React Model and create it and add it to our header section. So see in the next section.
All right, so in the last section, we have completed the authentication part using next auth package. In this section, we're going to work on the upload functionality. We are going to create this model. So when we click on this icon, we're going to see this model, which is going to make the background a little bit uh, not visible. And then we're going to have this icon here, this input, which is going to add the image for us later. So we need to install two packages, one for this icon, which is React icons, and also we're gonna install React model to be able to have this model. So let's go back to the Visual Studio code. And here, I'm gonna stop the server. Let's clear this. And we're gonna install two packages. One is react-icons and react-model. So once you have these two packages, for yourself first thing first we want to add the model in our header section the reason we are adding it to the header section because we have this icon here when we click on it we want to open it the model but if you put the model somewhere else like the, in the home page we need to have a global state which is going to track the changes a state of open from the header and bring it to that another component so we're gonna add it in just the header section so we need we don't need to pass the props from one component to another so here inside the header the jsx we're gonna use that react model so we're gonna import a model from react dash model the package that we have installed then what we want to do here we want to have a piece of state to track the opening and closing of that model. So that state is going to, we just call it is open, set is open, and the initial value is going to be false. And this is the function we're going to use to change the state from false to true. So the initial one is false. We don't need this console log, let's read that. So we're going to add the model at the end of this header section so in this div i want to add the model we just say if the is open is true then use the model so let's add the model here so as you can see we just have some header and button i'm gonna fix that in a second but let's see that we get this one in our project as well so what we want to do is when we click on this icon we want to open that model so first we need to add this icon to our project so let's actually first log in let me run the server let's go back to our home page so we are getting some errors the error is user state is not defined so i'm gonna import user state from react so now we have this header let's add that icon to here the icon is going to be next to this image that we have added here so in order to keep them next to each other what i want to do is to add because this is going to be two tag we, we need to put them inside an empty fragment so at the top of the image i want to add that icon which is uh, this icon 2 md add circle and its outline so let's add it here and then we're just going to import it at the top so we import that one from react icons forward slash two because it started from two so i want to show you how to find these icons so if you go to re search for react icons on google and we go to this website react-icons.github.io as you can see there there are a lot of icons from different packages you can just search the icon you want for example i want to add the circle so I just search circle and then I find something that I am interested in. For example, the plus one, which is here, I can use. So you just need to click on it and import it using this and use it like this. So this is the icon we are using. Okay, so let's see what error we are getting. The package two is not export from the package. Let's see. Uh, it's not two, it's IO actually. IO, 
and this one should be IO. As you can see here, we have IO. And then we need to change it at the bottom. Okay, now it should be fine. We put it here, as you can see. Let's add some styling here. So I want to make, make it bigger. We just say text 2x large. We set the cursor to be pointer. So when we hover over it, we see a cursor. And then we want to use transform because when we hover over it, I want to change the scale. So we just say scale dash one, two, five. So when we hover over it, we see the scale is changing, but we want, we want it to be with the transition. So we just say transition and with the duration of 300. Okay. Also, I want to make it red as well. When we hover over it, we can change that one by just saying hover text red 600 like this. As you can see, it came just this way. I wanted them to be next to each other. So what we can do here, we can just change this one to a div and then we add a class name. We make this one flex. We add a gap between them of two and I want to bring them next to each other horizontally, uh, vertically. We just say items center like this. Now it's okay. All right, so now when we click on this one, we want to open the model. So it's very simple. We just need to add an onclick event listener here, which is going to call that set is open function and set it to be true. So now if you click on it, uh, we are getting an error. Let me check. So it should be for the modal section. So let's check the import. So as you can see, the import is here. It should be uh, default. Because it's a default export, we need to import it like this. So let's try now. Now we can see that uh, we have this model and we have this close. So we're gonna style it so you can see it better. So let me bring this one to the right side. So the good things that we got it, now we have to just quickly style it so you can see it better inside the browser. So let's go to that model. So what we wanna add here, let's make a class name. I style it real quick. We just make a max width of large. We set the width in the mobile size to be 90%. And then we're gonna have a padding of six. Let's see what we get so far. So it's now still, we cannot see it. I wanna make this one absolute. And we wanna bring it to the top uh, 56. And then we want to, from the left, I want to bring it to the center using left 50%, but this is not exactly the center. So we need to use translate X with the 50%. So we, it comes exactly in the center. And then we're going to have a background of white. Also, we want to have a border too. We want to set it to be a rounded medium. And finally, we want to have a, some shadow effect of medium. Let's check it now. You can see it like that. You can close it, open it. And oh, now it's working better. As you can see, when I click outside, it's not gonna, it's not closing it. I want to close it. So we can just add some attributes here to fix that. So we just say on request close, this one, I request close. I want to set the open to be false. So as we are adding some prop, we need to add this one as well. So make it false. So now if we click outside, we're going to close that. Okay. So what else we want to add here? Another attribute we want to add is this attributes because we are getting some error inside the console for the, it's a warning for the react model. In order to remove that, we can simply add this attribute, which is area hide app and we set it to be false. And what else we want to add in this model, instead of just adding some H1 and other things, we want to add more, uh, like the final version, I want to add some camera here, icon, uh, an input, and a button. 
So inside this div, what I want to add is an icon, which is high camera icon. We need to import it at the top, which is coming from react icons for slash high. Let's see. Now we have this icon. So after the icon, so let's install the icon quickly. So I'm gonna just add a class name. We make it bigger with using text for XL. And then let's add some color to it with just a text gray 400. And let's make it bigger. We just make it 5XL. Looks better. And also we want to have a cursor to be pointer. Okay. So in order to bring it to the center, we need to style it here at the top. So in this div, we, what we want to do here, we want to add a flex and then flex column. I want everything to be on top of each other. We set the justify to be centers and items to be center. And also I want to set the height to be 100%. So after this icon, we want to add that input as well as adding the button. So here we just say input with the type of text. I want to set a max uh, length to that. I want to set it to be 150. We add a placeholder saying, please enter your caption or caption. Let's see it again. Okay, so let's install it real quick. I just want to add a class name. We want to set the margin to be four, border to be none, text to be center, and then let's make the width to be full. And when we focus on it, I want to remove the ring. So we set the ring to be zero. So now when we click on it, we still see the actually that uh, border. So what we want to do here, we can easily add something called outline none. So now we click on it, we don't see it. But it's not in the center exactly. Let's see the final version. I think here is fine. I don't know why here it's not in the center. Let's see the border. Uh, here we have some problem so let's go up so this is translate x minus 50 let's remove this uh, that's not related to that left 50 percent that's correct top so this one is flex justify center item center so let's check this one again so text center width to be full let's just move on uh, i'm gonna find it later i'm gonna show you so just so we here we just say border none for now now we need to add that button at the end so here we're gonna add a button saying upload post and then we want to style it here we just set the width to be Full. and then we want to set the background to be red 600 and then text to be white padding of two shadow medium shadow and then we set it to be rounded large when we hover over it we can just change its brightness to be 105% and when we, we are dis it's disabled I want the background to be gray 200 and also when it, it's disabled I want to set the cursor to be not allowed and as well as when we hover over it I don't want to change the brightness so just say brightness to be 100% so now we can see the brightness here is changing so we can test the, its color when it's disabled okay 
And what else we want to add is the an uh, icon here. When we click on it, we want to close this as well. So at the end, I want to add another icon with the name AI outline close. Let's bring it at the top, which is coming from react icons for slash AI. We can see it here. Let's uh, bring it at the top. So we added, we set it to cursor to be pointer. And also when we want to make it absolute top two, right two. And then we want to, when we hover over it, I want to change the text to be red. 600 with a transition with a duration of 300. So we can see the red color when we click on it. We cannot close it now. We need to add some events listener here. We just we we add an on click. So this is going to set the is open to false. So now we can close it with this button. Okay. So that's it for creating the model. In the next section, we're going to add the upload functionality. So when we click on this uh, camera, like the one in the final version, we want to choose an image from our place. This image is going to be uploaded to the Firebase storage and we get the link. So once we add the caption, we can upload the post. So first we want to add the upload image functionality. So see you in the next section. Uh, before we forget, we just add this one to the GitHub. So this is going to be add model functionality using React model. So let's add everything and commit and push. So see in the next section for the uploading image functionality. All right, in the last section, we have completed the upload model functionality. We have created this model. In this section, we're going to work on image uploading functionality. So for image uploading, we're gonna use Firebase as storage. So we need to go to Google Fire Store or Firebase. You search Google Firebase and we go to firebase.google.com. You sign in with the uh, Gmail that you use for that. And once you are logged in, you just go to console. And here we're gonna create a new project. So I create a new project. I, I just call it insta-next. I think I already have one similar name. I just changed it to uh, v2. And then we just remove this Google Analytics, we create the project. So once this one is completed, we need to create an, an storage for this Firebase. We're gonna set some rules and then we're gonna uh, connect our code, our projects to this for, uh, storage. So now the our Firebase project is ready, we can just keep continue. Here, you just click on this web, get started. We create a web application. Uh, we create a name for that one. I just call it Insta Next V2. Create a register app. So now it's asking us to install Firebase. So we're going to install it first. So let's stop the server, clear this, and paste that code. After installation, we need to create this file a file with the extension firebase.js with these contents, which are our Firebase configuration. So I'm going to copy this. We come back to our Visual Studio code. We're going to create a file uh, with the name firebase.js inside the src folder. So here we're going to create a file called firebase.js and we paste that code. So this is just the application. We need to export that. So we just say export const app at the end. And also we want to keep this API keys in our environmental variable. So here I'm going to cut this and replace it by process.env with this uh, next public file based API key. You need to add next public at the beginning because this is a public API key and it's visible inside the browser, but 
Next.js is going to protect this one by their uh, methods. So here inside it, .env, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna paste that code first, and then I'm gonna copy this name and paste it here. Okay, that's that's it for the environmental variable. It's still uh, the fibers is being installed, so we wait for that, and then also we need to here continue to console. We click on build and click on a storage. So we're gonna need create a storage for our application. I just click on uh, storage. We're gonna go to the production mode because I wanna add some rules for that. We just choose somewhere our storage, uh, anywhere near to your audience. I just leave it to be US central. Okay, now our storage is completed. Let's create the rules for that one. The rules I want to use is just uh, limiting the image size and also the content type. So for the reading, it's fine. Everybody can read, but we allow write only. We just say allow write if request dot resource dot size is less than two megabytes. So I just say two multiply by thousand twenty four multiply by 1024 so one kilobyte one kilobyte it's going to be one megabyte and then two megabytes and then we're going to add end at the end request dot resource dot content type dot matches and this is going to match only image with any extension format so once you do that, you just click on publish to publish the rules. So something is missing. Let me check uh, here. Before the if, we need to add some clone. Okay. So I'm going to copy this one as well. So you're going to have it. So I'm going to copy this and paste it inside this code at the end. I'm going to comment it out. So if you want to see these rules, you just come to the uh, GitHub repository and get it from here inside the firebase.js. Now we want to add an input to upload. So for if inside our header.js, if you remember, we had a camera here. Just next to the camera, we're going to have an input. Let me bring this one to the right side so you can see it better. So let's run the server. So let's refresh the page. Let's open it. So, okay, so next to the camera, I'm going to add an input, but with the type of file. Okay, so now we have this one. So when we click on it, we can upload some file. So what we want to upload, first thing first, I want to just be able to upload images. So we just say accept only image. So this is only going to prevent people to choose other files. And then... When something changed here, when an, an image is chosen, I want to call a function called add image to host. And then we're going to create this function at the top. So we create a function called with this name. So this is going to get, well, let me remove this. So this is going to get an event. And then here we just get the file, which is e.target.files and we get the first one because we only want the first image uh, we only want to upload one image and if there is a file we want to do some uh, stuff first thing first we need to add a piece of state for getting the image there so we just create a piece of state called selected file and this is going to be null at the beginning and then if the file is there, we want to set the selected file to that file. So this is going to give us something. Uh, let me show you what I mean by that. Uh, this is not actually a URL. This is just the file. So let me console log file. i show you what I mean by that. So here when we console log and choose an image, 
uh, let's see. Uh, here should be set selected for. Okay. So we choose an image. We can see we get something like that, which includes the name of the file, size, but it doesn't have a URL. In order to show it here, we need a URL. So we need a, another piece of state called image file URL. And this is going to be null as well at the beginning. And then here, once we have uh, the selected file, we want to convert that one to URL and uh, put it inside the set image file URL. We can convert it using url.createObject URL and give this file. Now, if I console log this image file URL, you're going to see that's a URL. So let's refresh the page and you choose an image. First, it's null. Uh, let's see. Okay, now we got the URL. This is the URL. So if you click on that URL, let me see, let me copy this. Let's refresh the page. If you put it inside an image tag, this is going to be a, uh, an image, you can use it. I'm gonna show you how. So first we convert it to the URL. Another thing I forgot actually, when now we have this one, we don't wanna click on this input. We wanna click on this camera to upload image. So in order to fix that, we can just make this input. Uh, where was the camera? Uh, here. In we can make this input hidden, but when we click on the camera, we want to refer to this input. So in order to do that, we want to add a reference for that. We can use the use ref react hook to do that. So inside the camera, Inside the input, we want to create a reference, and this is going to refer to a piece of, ref, uh, we just say file picker ref, and then we're going to create this reference at the top. We just say file ref, uh, file picker ref is use ref, and we set it to be null at the beginning. And then when we click on that uh, camera, we want to call this input. So so we add an onclick event listener here, which is going to call that reference. We just say set. We, we just, yeah, let me fix this. We just call this file picker ref. And we need to add something after that, which is current dot click. So this is going to click on it. Current dot click. And we need to call this. Okay, now when we click on this camera, we're going to open that, we're going to use that input with a type of file. And then once we choose that file, I want to show it here inside the, this one, uh, like the final version. When we choose something, we're going to preview it here instead of the camera. So we're going to create a, a condition and instead of the camera, we want to sh show the image. So at the top of this camera, I'm gonna create a condition. We just say, if there is a selected file, show an image. So let's just choose this one. It should be a condition. Mm, so, and so this is going to be a question mark. And then otherwise we wanna see that camera. We can put this one here as well but this one should be inside. Oh, we can put it at the top. We don't need to put this input here. Okay, so let me see. Let's choose an image. Now we see that image. Let's just style it so it's not gonna be that much big. So let's bring this one to the right side. And for the image, we add some, as you can see in the source, we just choose the image file URL, not the selected file. Otherwise we cannot see the image. So that's why we converted, we converted this uh, selected file to, an, to a URL. So here, I'm gonna just set the width to be full. I wanna set the maximum height to be 250 pixels. 
and then we just say object hover because I want to keep the spec ratio and then cursor to be pointer. Okay. Okay, I think that's fine. But when we click on the image, I want to uh, change the image as well. So uh, we need to just add an on click event listener as well on the image. So in this way, I want to just uh, set set the selected file to null again when we click on it. So here we choose an image and then when we click on the image, we're going to remove that image. Other things we want to do when we select the image, we want to upload the image. So I'm going to add a use effect react hook. So once the image is selected, we want to automatically upload the image. So here at the top, I want to add a use effect react hook. We, don't, we need to import it from react. And then we just want to, if there is a selected file, we want to uh, we want to call a function called upload image or upload image to storage. Let's close this. And this is going to be triggered when there is a selected file. And then we want to create that function. So that function is going to be asynchronous because we need to upload it and wait for the upload. And then we're going to finish that. So let's create the function first so we don't get an error. And then we're going to create the function. The other things I want to do is to add a loading effect. If you look at the final version, you can see uh, when we choose an image, the image is going to have a pulsing animation. So we know that this is being uploaded. So we need to add another piece of state for tracking the loading effect. So at the top, I want to add another piece of state for uploading or image, image file uploading. We can go just call it like this. And this is going to be false at the beginning. So once this function is called, we want to set that image file uploading to true. So, and then we want to create the storage, which is going to be the get the storage function from Firespace and we need to import the application from the file that we have created that firebase.js if you remember we have exported the app so we're gonna use that app to so the firebase knows which application to upload so they're gonna check the api key and etc and upload our image to the right storage so here we're gonna import the app and also we need to import get storage from uh, firebase storage so we're going to import get storage from Firebase storage. After that, we're going to have, uh, we're going to create a file name because when we are uploading, this image has a name, for example, one.avif or 10.jpg. So if we choose just this name to store it, if I want to again upload the same file, we're going to get an error because the file name cannot be the same. So we're going to create a mechanism that we never have a, a rep repetitive name and all the name would be unique. So here I just create a constant for file name and I want to create a file name based on the date of the user's computer. So we can get the time and then we just add a hyphen, for example, and then we just add the name of the file. So this is going to be, for example, some time plus the name. So it's going to be always unique because after a few seconds, when they want to upload the same file, the, the date and time is going to be completely different. So this is the file name. After that, we're going to have the storage reference, which we are using the ref from Firebase storage. We need to import that, which is going to get that the storage that we have created here and also the file name which we have, we have there. And then we're gonna have the upload task. So this is going to control the uploading for us. So we're gonna use a method called upload byte. Upload bytes resumable from Firebase storage. 
we're gonna give them the storage reference and then the selected file. Once we have the upload task, we're gonna track the uploading because the uploading takes time and also so we just say upload that on upload task on that on it means any state change we're gonna have the state change any stage for example one percent upload two percent upload we're gonna show these things for example we get the snapshot of that for example we, we can track the progress so the track of the progress is going to be the, like this we just say a snapshot that byte transferred over the bytes total bytes so this is going to be a fraction between zero and one because total bytes, for example, is two megabyte. And if the bytes transferred is one megabyte, we're gonna have 0.5. If you multiply that to 100, we're gonna have the percentage. So this is going to be 50% percentage, 50%. And then we can just, for now, console log upload is, for example, 50% down. So this is for that. So let's close this. After that, we're gonna uh, track the error. If the, an error happens, we wanna console log the error. And also when an error happened, I wanna uh, stop the uploading. We just say set image file uploading to false. And also we wanna set the image file URL to null too. We can just uh, select the file to null as well so the person choose another file so let's close this after that we want to get the url so this one is going to give us the url we're going to use a method called get download url from firebase for slash storage this is going to get the upload task snapshot.ref and then it's going to give us the download url which we are going to set the image file URL to that download URL. So this is going to be replaced by the uh, initial image file URL that we add just locally on the browser. And this is going to be the URL we get from the Firebase. Uh, this is the URL from the Firebase. And also we want to set the uploading to false. So we know that everything is done. So we're going to close that. And we're gonna close this one as well. This one, I think it's fine. I'm gonna check again. If there is an error, we're gonna check it again because there are a lot of parentheses we need to close. So this one is closed here, so it's fine. So let's try it. So we're gonna choose an image. <clears throat> For example, this image. Let's create and make a, a big image so we can see the loading effect. Okay, we have to uh, let me open the console so we can see the progress here. So this error is actually is not important. This is just a warning. Just ignore this one. Uh, this one is more than two megabytes, so we're gonna get an error finally. Okay, we got an error because the image was more than two megabyte. We cannot upload it to the storage <clears throat> because we set the rules to be less than two megabytes. So I'm gonna choose a file less than two megabyte like this. Now it's uploading, as you can see, it went to the 100% and it's completely uploaded. So now we can check our files. As you can see, we got the file. This is the date, the time, which is unique. And this is the file. And then if you check, check it on Google, <clears throat> you can see that we have a URL. This is the URL from Firebase. And this is the image, okay? So now we have the file. So we didn't uh, have the loading effect yet. We need to just go to that image, this image, uh, not this one. Yeah, this image, we want to add the loading effect here. So I'm going to create a conditional here. Like we just say, we add a back tick and then we close this. Here we can just uh, create a variable. We just say, if there is a image file uploading, then we can just uh, add an animation. We just say animate false. So let's try it. I think we, we didn't complete it yet. <clears throat> okay, uh, what's the problem here? I think uh, uh, this one, we need to close it at the end. Okay, let's choose the image. Let's choose the same image. 
now we can see we are getting the loading effect as soon as it's uploaded and we get the URL we we don't see the loading effect okay all right that was it for uploading functionality let's add this one to the github so this is going to be add upload image functionality so we can just commit and push in the next section we're going to use this image url plus the caption that we have here and we're going to add it to the firebase firestore database so we're going to keep the track of the all the posts and then in the following sections we're going to sh show these posts in this feed section so see you in the next section All right, in the last section, we have completed the upload image functionality. In this section, we're going to work on upload the post to the database, which we are using, which is Firestore. First thing first, we need to go to our console, firebase.google. We wanna, we, are, we already have the storage. We wanna add the Firestore database. So when we click on Fire, Firestore database, we can just create the database. And uh, we just choose a location here and then we press next. I just want to put it in the test mode. So in the test mode, so one month you can uh, add read and write, and then you don't have the access. You can extend this num timestamp. So we just click it. We create this. So sometimes we get some errors like this. When you close this one, uh, when you refresh the page, we should see an error here. Now, when we click on it and then you go to console, maybe you don't get that error because I already created here, I get that error. So I click here on this default database and then I need to switch to native mode. Okay, so now if you try again, if you refresh the page, we shouldn't see any error. So now our Firebase Firestore is ready. Let's try to send data to this Firestore from our code. So after we got this, all the information, we want to submit the information using this button. If you remember, we had upload post here. So here I'm going to add an onclick event listener, which is going to call a function called handle submit. And we need to create this function at the top before the return. We just create that function, which is a handle submit. But you just remember this is a asynchronous we need, because we need to wait until the data go there. So we just need to create an asynchronous function. So which data we want to add? We want to add the user. We want to add, let me show you. We want to add this image, whatever image we choose. We want to add this caption. Also, we want to add the username, the, the, this user's username, image, and also we want to add the timestamp. But we don't have the username. If you remember in our session, when we console log the session, we saw that we only have the user name, not the username. I mean, for example, uh, let me just console log, you see it again so here if you console log session uh, let me see we go to the inspect console we can see we have the user we have the email we have the image but we have the name we don't have the username we want to have some uh, username so in order to create the username for simplicity i just want to connect this first name and uh, surname together and we make them lowercase so in order to keep uh, have it here, we need to have a callback inside our uh, route.js inside this. If you go to the explorer section, we need to go to this API of next of route. And then here we're going to create a callback. So after this providers, we want to create a callback. And then this one is going to have update our session. So this is going to be asynchronous. Let's use the session. And then this is going to give us the session plus the token. 
and then we want to update that uh, session dot user dot username so we want to add a new thing to the session and this is going to be the session dot user dot name we want to split it first make it separate and then we want to join that and then we want to make it lowercase so once we have this we're gonna return the session and also we want to have the id of the user too so we want to have the session dot user dot uid we want to get it from the token which is token dot sub so we're gonna add two things to our users let's try again so now we don't have it uh, it's already added actually so we have the email image name now uid is added which is we are getting from google authentication and also we have the username here so if you try another gmail like this one you can see that this one has uid and also the username is code with sahad so we can just when we are submitting the post we want to submit these extra informations as well so let's go here uh, inside the header.js let's go back to our handle submit so first thing first i want to have a loading effect as well for the submit so we i want to know when the submission is completed so we had the image loading effect once i want to add the uh, upload post or post uploading we can we can call it post uploading okay so it said it uh, we set it to be false as an initial value and once we have this function we want to set the post uploading to true first and then we want to have the docs reference so we want to use a method called add doc to add the collection this is gonna come from the firestore so we need to import add doc here from firebase 4 slash firestore and then this doc is going to have the collection so we have the collection which is coming from firebase 4 slash firestore then we're gonna have the db which is the database if you remember we had the firebase js we had the app here so we're gonna uh, add that one here as well so db and then the post the collection name so in order to get the db we need to import something else from firestore which is get uh, i think it's get firestore and then we need to initialize it here let's delete this console log and then initialize that here at the bottom db is going to be get the store with firestore and then the app which is app is coming from the, this file firebase.js let's go back here in our function so we have this so we're gonna send few information first is the username so now we have in the session we want to add the caption we don't have the caption yet so in our input in the caption input uh, it's here let's check inside the model we have an input with a type of text so this one is going to when we add an unchanged event listener we can set the caption to either target that value but we don't have caption yet we just need to add the caption piece of state here at the top so we added just here caption and the initial value is, is an empty string so we have added this username we're gonna add the caption we can just say caption equals caption or we can because they, they have the same name we can remove one of them then we want to have the profile image which is going to be user that uh, session that user that image then we have the image that is uploading which is the image file url remember we have uploaded the image and set the file url to that download url so we have that one and also we want to have the time stamp time stamp we can use a method called server Time percent from Firebase forward slash Firestore to get that information so we know when we are uploading it. So I think that's it. We can close that.
and once we are completed we can just set the loading to false and also we can close the model just a set is open to false i think we are ready to try this and one the other things i forgot to do is to change this button disable so we have a button for submission but it's disabled by default I want it to be disabled only when we are uh, uploading or we don't have an image or we don't have any captions. So here, so we want to disable it when we don't have any file selected, we don't have any caption, but caption, if it's empty or a space, I, I don't want it as well. So I'll just say trim the caption. So trim means when you have a space, you don't consider the space at the beginning. and. So if there is no caption, or we can just say caption.string is equal to an empty string, or if we are uploading the post, and also if we are uploading the image, I want it to be disabled. That's it, I think that's fine. So let's try our application. So now we're gonna choose an image. Let's test this image. We upload it, we want to add a caption. For example, I say nice flower. And now it's not disabled. So we have the caption, we have the image. So when we click on upload, this is going to be disabled, but we are getting an error. Let's see the error. Okay, one of the our things in add doc is undefined, which is the username. Okay, let's see why we don't have the username. So this is a session that user that user name. Uh, so let's uh, console log this session here again. So we cannot console log here. Let's console log here at the top. Console log. So session dot user. Ah, it's here. We made it. I made some spelling mistake. It's username. It's I, I just spelled username. So I have to fix this one inside the router.js. So this one is the username. Okay. Let's try again. Okay, now it's okay. Let's try again. Choose an image. Nice flower. You click on upload post. Oh, we are getting an error again missing or insufficient permission okay so probably somewhere here in the rules we don't have a permission let's check the rules okay this one shows allow read and write false so i'm gonna just set allow both of them so we just publish okay let's try again say hello new post so we're gonna upload the post. Okay, this time was successful. Let's check our data here. Now we have the post collection with one document. These are the fields. So the caption was hello new post. We got the image, profile image, timestamp, and username. I think everything was fine. Uh, we didn't add the username still. Where is the username? Uh, oh, okay, here. Go to the hand so one two three four five that's that's correct okay that was it for adding the data to the database in the next section we are going to create these two feeds i want to make them uh, responsive so we see this feed only in the mobile size and then we have this mini profile when we have a bigger size so we're going to create this feed responsive even uh, by using our session so see you in the next section. Uh, before that, we just need to add this one to the GitHub before we forget. So this one is, uh, we have just created, we added the uh, upload post functionality to the fire store. So we're gonna commit and push. So see you in the next section for making the, our feed section responsive. All right, in the last section, we have added our post to the database 
using Firestore. In this section, we're going to create our fit section. And then later on, we're going to show the post here inside our fit section. So we're going to make it like uh, two columns for the left side and one column for the right side. So we can simply do that by using grid system in using uh, Tailwind CSS. So inside the page.js in the home page, so what we do here, so let's actually, so we can have a separate component for the feed. So I'm gonna create a component called feed.jsx. Let's create a React functional component and add it to our home page. So here, instead of this one, we just wanna have an empty fragment. And inside that, I'm gonna add that feed. And inside the feed, we're gonna have a, some design that is going to be with the grid system. So this feed is going to have the main section. Then inside that, we're gonna have two things. On the left side, we're gonna have the posts, which is the left side. And on the right side, we have the mini profile. Oh, let me fix this. So we're gonna have two more components. One is posts.jsx. Let's create a React functional component. And then we're gonna have the mini profile.jsx. So let's add them inside the fit section. So I'm gonna have the two sections. One, we can use the section for the le uh, left side, and then we're gonna have another section for the right side. So this is going to be the post. We need to import that. And this is going to be the mini profile. Okay, so let's see what we get now. So we have post, we have mini profile. So now we wanna design them in a way that I mentioned. So in the main tag, we're gonna create a grid. And this grid is going to have one column in the mobile size, but in the medium size and above, we wanna have the grid with the three columns. So as I mentioned, we have one, two, three columns in the, mo in the medium size and above. In the mobile size, we only have one column. And then we wanna set the, in the medium size and above, I wanna make the maximum width of six XL. And we wanna bring them to the center using MX auto. So let's see what we get. Now we have the post, we have the mini profile. And then I want the post to have two columns and mini profile only one column. So in this, this section, which is for posts, I wanna make more than medium size. I wanna make the column to span two. For the mini profile, I wanna have, I wanna make it hidden in the mobile size. But in the medium size and above, I want to make it inline black, uh, sorry, inline grid, because it's a grid system. And then we want to have a medium size and above, we want to have column span of one. So one column for MIDI profile, two columns for posts. And when we have a smaller size, less than medium, we don't want to see the mini profile, we only see the post, which is going to cover all our place. So that's it for creating our fit section responsive. Let's add this one to the GitHub. So this section we have, we made, we make the fit section responsive. So we can just commit and push. So in the next section, we're going to work on the mini profile. So it's going to be similar to this with the user image, username, and this. And if we are, they are not logged in, we're gonna see only the uh, logo of this Instagram and the sign in button. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have created this responsive feed section. In this section, we're gonna work on this mini profile. The only things we need to do is uh, actually make this mini profile a sticky here. But as you can see, when we are scrolling down, it's not gonna move. So it's very simple to do that. 
we can just add a div here and bring this mini profile inside this div and here we're gonna add some a sticky uh, we cannot we don't say sticky here we just say fixed it's uh, it's it's a similar actually and then we we need to actually put a width for that so we set the width to be 380 pixels for example so now we have it here let's uh, complete this mini profile let's see what we get now we have here the mini profile i want to see it so inside the mini profile we want to show three things we want to see the image username and also we want to have the ability to sign in or log out so we need to make this one as a, we are using some uh, hooks so we need to make this one in a client side so we just say use client and we want to get that use session from next off and also we need that sign in and sign out so here we're gonna get the data we get the session we want to add an image here at the top so let's delete this one we make an image and the source is going to be dynamic because when they are, they are logged in we want to see the user's image when they are not logged in we want to see that uh, instagram image so i want to make this one dynamic we just say if uh, session we want to make it protected because sometimes if we don't have session we get an error so we add a question mark if there is an image we want to see that otherwise we just said add all here otherwise we want to see the image of the instagram logo so we have that one in the public folder i think it was uh, it was this one yeah let me copy this name and we just put it here now we see the image let's log out we see the image of the instagram so what we want to do here we just want to uh, style it a little bit so let's quickly accept this one i'm gonna just change it a little bit the width and height is fine rounded full and then we want to have border that exactly i want to add actually the padding of two pixels so everything is okay when we log in we should see the image of the user okay that's fine and in this div i want to add some padding so let's make it flex item center justify between because we want to have a space between the image username and the button we add a margin top of 14 and margin in the left of 10. once we have this after the image we're gonna have that uh, this alternative is going to be the user image user profile pic or Insta instagram rego okay so after the image we want to have that uh, if you remember here let's log in so we're going to have a div and inside the div we're going to have the user username and then this word welcome to instagram so we're going to have a div and inside the div we're going to have an h2 tag so this tag is going to be the session we want to protect it session that user let's add a question mark and then that username okay and then the other one is going to be an h3 tag saying welcome to instagram so that one they have a style text small text gray 400 and for the styling of this h2 tag i just want to make them to be flex not flex a font font bold okay and then after this one after this div we want to have that button but the button is going to be actually dynamic too based on the session so if the session we have a session we want to see the button saying sign out otherwise we want to see the sign in so i'm going to accept this so we see the error okay now it's okay for this div that is covering the username and we just want to make the flex one so it starts from beginning and then i want to just make it with the margin left of four 
I think it's okay now. If you look, uh, this one is sign out. When I sign out, we only see the Instagram image and welcome to Instagram and the sign in button. So when we click on it, we can sign in. Okay, looks okay. Okay, so let's add this one to the GitHub. So this is going to be add or complete the mini profile component. Then commit and push. So in this next, next section, we're going to start creating the postcard here and show it. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the mini profile section. In this section, we're going to get the posts data and then show it here. If you look at the final version, we can see that we have some interactivity with the post section. So if you remember, when we have inter interactivity, we don't, we can't actually have the server side. So I want to keep this image and the caption in the server side. So it's going to be good for the SEO and the rest of the section of the feed section, like comments and likes to be in the client side. So let's review what is the benefit of using the client side and the server side and then we're going to keep continue for our project so here so let's bring this one here let's add another text so there are some pros and cons for server side rendering so the pros of server side rendering so we're going to have first thing first we have search engines and the SEO. So search engines can crawl the site for better SEO. So that's the main benefit because the React itself doesn't, uh, because it's all in the client side. So the search engines cannot get all the information of the website when they're crawling it. But in the server side, before the HTML is created inside the browser, we have all the information because everything is created inside the server. So that's the first benefit. The second one is the initial page load is faster. So we're gonna have a faster loading effect when we are using the server side rendering. And the final one, which is very good for static sites, when we are is we have a static site which when we have a site like a blog page that doesn't change a lot that's the best thing uh, for the website to use server side because it's going to be very fast so it's great for static sites so that was the pros of the server side rendering now let's explore the cons of that the cons of server side rendering so the first one, which is very bad when you are using the server side is frequent servers request. So we're going to have a lot of requests to the server, which is going to be costly. If you're using, for example, some uh, places that going to count all the requests and it's going to be very expensive for you to run that website on that server. So frequent server request. The second one we're going to have a slow page render. So for the server side, we have a faster render, but here and overall a slow page rendering. And also we, we need to wait full page to be reload. So we see the effects. I'm going to show you in our website, this one as well. So we have a full page reloads. And final one is the the problem of server side rendering we cannot have interaction we cannot click on anything we cannot fill any forms inputs and etc so we have a non rich site interaction so these are the pros and cons of using server side rendering so in our website we're gonna as i mentioned we just do this image and this caption server side the rest is going to be client side but you, you're not going to notice it. For example, if I refresh the page, you see that you don't feel that one is server side, one is client side, because the difference is very, very subtle. So in our website, 
in our project we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have the post uh, let me close everything so we're gonna focus on one thing at a time so in uh, inside the src components we have now post.jsx so we want to get the posts and show it inside the card as i mentioned before we want to do it the post getting the information in the server side because we want to show it before even the page loaded so it's going to be good for seo so in next.js there is a way to do that that is very easy and simple so we're going to create a synchronous function so this is a react functional component we're going to make this one asynchronous and we are able to do that part so this function is should be asynchronous and then we're going to have the request at the top so here first thing first we want to get the db and etc because we need to connect to our database so we're going to import uh we're going to import the app from firebase this file and then we're going to initialize that db which is equal to fire next no, sorry get firestore which is coming from firebase forward slash firestore we have this one and then we're going to have a query because we want to have a query for our this collection so the next one is query so we could just say q which is equal to query which is a method from firebase i'm going to import that and then we want to have the db and then we want to request to the posts and we want to sort this one as well so in order to sort it we need to have a collection here collection this one is coming from firestore as well so this one is going to be inside this and then before closing this we want to sort this by using order by which is coming from firebase firestore and we want to order it by timestamp if you remember we have timestamp and we want to make it descending so the newest comes first so this is a query and then we want to have the query snapshot to get the information using the method called get docs which is coming from firebase firestore we pass this query as 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 you see here we have a wait here and we have asynchronous so this is going to run inside the server get the we send us the information inside the client side before the page even rendered and then we want to save this one in a variable we call the variable for example posts or we can call it data which is an empty array at the beginning and then we're gonna use for each method we get each document from this snapshot and then we push the document inside this data and we don't want to only get the data we want to get the id as well so the id is going to be equal to doc.id sorry diet id and also we want to spread that data so we're going to get all of them so let's see what uh, here we need to add a bracket because it's an object okay so it's an object including the id and the rest of the data which includes the post image caption and etc so we have this data now we want to send this data to a post card so this was the post.jsx we want to have a postcard or we can just call it post.jsx and this one is going to be a react functional component and we want to get the information here that information the data or we can call it post so here we're going to send that data so inside this div we're going to loop through that map get each post and then send it to the post that we have post we're going to import it we're going to pass a key because uh, it's going to be uh, we need to have a key for a any map in our application otherwise we get an error and we pass this post so here inside the post let's first we just show the post title we don't have title we have caption so we just say caption okay let's see what we get inside our application okay now we have one post with the caption hello new post so we only have one post let's add more so let's add a different image 
we just say nice picture and upload the post so as you can see we need to refresh the page to see that because that is the server side and this interaction is in the client side so in order to refresh the page after uploading we go to the header once we submit the file everything is done we want to reload the application we can do that by just adding location dot reload okay let's try again let's change this image we already have that post i want to show you in action when we have a new okay let's change this to image this image okay post three so upload post as you can see we reload the page now we have the post three at the at the beginning okay so now we have the captions let's create the complete the post component let's bring this one to the right side now we have the post.jsx here on the left side so let's complete that so in the div that is covering everything i want to just make the background color to be white i want to make a margin in the y-axis of y sorry margin in the y-axis of seven and we are going to have a border and then we're going to have a rounded medium you cannot see it well but we're going to keep continue and adding more things so you can see it completely so and then inside this div we're going to have another div which is going to be flex item center so everything will be centered so this is for the header section if you look at the final version each post has a header which includes the image of the person username and this horizontal dots icon so this one we want to make a center we want to have a padding of five border bottom and we want to set the border color to be gray 100 so inside this one we're going to have the image for the profile image the source is going to be post dot profile image okay and then the alternative is going to be that for example we can use that username post dot user name and let's install this one real quick so we're gonna have h12 height of 12 we're gonna make it rounded full object cover to keep the aspect ratio and then we're going to have a border heading of one and margin in the right side of three after the image we're going to have a paragraph showing the username we can accept that yeah we, can, we just made the font to be bold and then we're going to flex one which starts from here and then we're going to have that icon on the right side the horizontal icon vertical icon so let's import that one first at the top import the icon name is going to be high alt line dot or dots vertical from react icons forward slash high let's add it here you can see and let's set the height to be five five that's it for the header section after the header so we're going to have the image of the post so let's accept this one so we see the image so post that image the alternative is post that caption so we have set the object cover so we're going to keep the aspect ratio and we set the width to be full after this one we're going to have the our caption so it's going to be a paragraph inside it's going to be post dot caption but i want to have that username as well so we're going to have a, a span here with the post dot username so this is going to be uh, let's make this span inside this paragraph so we can fix that so here we're going to have a class name we want to make it a uh, padding of five we want to truncate the truncate means if we have a long caption we don't want to see it we just make it dot 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 for this username let's make it what happened here so here we're going to have font bold 
and margin in the right side of two. I, th I think that's it for this one. You can see it's completely responsive. So these are actually a little bit connected. Let's fix that one. I think there is a problem in the mini profile. Okay, here margin left, not a scroll margin. That's one. Let's fix this one. And then justify between. Let's make this width to be full. Okay, now it's fixed. So we're going to have, I think it's fine now. Looks okay. And it's sticky at the top. So in the next section, we're going to work on the like functionality. As I mentioned before, the like functionality is, is going to be on the client side because it's, it needs some interactivity between the user and the browser. So let's add this one to the GitHub. So this was the complete, the post card of the feed section or the, oh, that's fine. So we can just commit and push. So see you in the next section for the like functionality. All right, in the last section, we have completed the postcard in the server side. In this section, we're going to add the like functionality. So if you look at the final version, you can see when we, we have a heart button, heart icon. When it's active, it's red. And it's, when it's not active, it's just uh, empty. So we're going to use two different like icons to achieve that. And also we can see the number of likes here, which now is one and when you click it's two likes and it's completely in real time. So as soon as we add this one, we see the change inside the database. So the like functionality is above the caption. So we need to go to the post.jsx and before the caption, we want to add that like section. So we're going to create a component with the name like section, the JSX, create a React functional component, and then we add it here just before that caption section. We're going to import it, and then we want to pass. We, the only things we need to pass is the ID of the post. So we need that ID. So this, we have this ID and then we add this like to this post. We're going to search the post first in the, uh, the Firebase Firestore and then we add the like there. So here we're going to pass the ID, which is going to be post.id. That's it. Let's see what we get. Now we have the like section here. So let's continue and complete this like section. So we're going to have two different types of like things. Like uh, first thing first, actually, we don't want to see this like section if the person is not logged in. So we want to have that session. But when we are having the session, we cannot use that uh, server side. We need to use the client side because we have the hook, the use session hook. And then we're going to import that use session from next of forward slash react. We're going to get the data and then the session. We call it session. And then here inside this div, we want to say if there is a session, then we're going to have the like functionality, which is going to be a div. And for this div, let's just style it real quick. I just want to make it flex, justify a bit. Uh, we don't need to actually justify here. We just add a border at the top. Uh, and then we just set the color of the border to be gray 100. That's it. And inside this div, we're going to have two types of icons so we're going to have the outline with the with the heart with the outline and the normal high heart so we're going to import those at the top so we're going to import it's all from the hero icons hero icon outline heart and also we want to have the hero icon only heart so this is the field one this is the empty one and then we want to have a piece of state so if we have a like if the this person that is logged in like the post already we want to have 
that piece of stay true otherwise we want to make it false so liked or we can just call it has liked and we make it false at the beginning but we want to have a use session so we want to check if the person already liked it or not otherwise we want to uh, let's actually import this use state and then we're going to have a use effect and check if the person already liked it or not we cannot see it yet because we don't have the actually we didn't like the post yet so in order to let's add it and i'll just explain it to you we don't use that so we're going to have a use effect let's import that use effect it's already imported so this use effect when we have a session we want to add that one so so we have the has like and also we want to see all the likes so we're going to have for example one like two likes and etc in the post it's going to it's going to be an array because we want to see the users array so first it's going to be an empty array and then we want to check that array using the a snapshot here so we just say on a snapshot which is from the firebase firestore we have imported there at the top so any likes change here so i'm gonna have a like here if the likes change we want to call this use effect so here we want to use the collection we just say collection which is coming from firebase firestore we want to check the collection with our db so we need to import the db as well so we're going to import first thing first we want to import the uh, app from firespace this file and then we're going to in initialize it and get the db using the get firestore method we need to import that we have done this one before that's why i'm quickly passing this part so we have the db and then we want to search for the posts collection and then inside that we want to check the id of the user inside the likes collection after that we get the information as a snapshot and then we want to set we're going to set the likes to snapshot the docs so that's it i think we don't need the rest okay we close this so this is going to get the likes from the database so we don't have the ID, we need to get it as a props. If you remember in the post at JSX, we pass this ID. So we get it here. So we, we're gonna get the likes now, but now we don't have any likes. So we just, just in case we got all of them. Now we wanna add the likes. So we're gonna, we, uh, we got the likes. Now we wanna be sure that this post has a like or not. So we're gonna have another use effect, use a state. So this user state, actually this is going to make a loop because we are setting the likes and then we're gonna call this one. So this is not gonna be likes, this is going to be DB actually. So that one, I make sure to fix that. And then now we wanna check if the likes, we wanna search all the likes. If the like has that ID that is equal to our session, that UID, and if it's if it's minus one it means that person is not it didn't like that so let me explain this one how can i explain this uh so let's check this here i want to show you so let's draw here something so we have a an array so different id for different users for example id id and goes it's like this we want to search here the id of the user that is signed in for example here this person is signing we have this id by the session that user that uid and then we want to search through these ids if uh, we use that method find find index so the index can be zero one two until the end but if it's so if it's zero one two so the person is already like this post but if it's minus one minus one is outside this array it means that there is no id in the array with the same id of the person who liked it so minus one is the number outside it can be minus two minus three 
but I just want to know, I just want you to know that why we are choosing minus one, because this is outside the index here. So we just say, if we search this one, if it's not minus one, so it means it's zero, one, two, and etc. It means the person is inside that. So we want to set has like to true. So the person is already liked it. That's it. We can just say otherwise, but I think that's fine because it's already it's false. We can just make it like this. And then we want to check that one anytime the array of likes changed. So we're getting an error. Let me check if we are missing something. So we have this parenthesis that is closed here. Uh, okay, we have here a parenthesis. I think we don't need this. Okay, now, now we have this index. So now we can work on the putting that like uh, icon. So based on this has like, we can add the like icon. So let's add a div here. So first we want to have the icon. We just say if has like is true, show that high heart icon. We want to make it red and we add a cursor pointer. Otherwise show the outline that doesn't have anything like this. So now we have this heart icon because we didn't, uh, we didn't like this post yet. So we see the outline, the second one. But uh, let's actually add more styling to that, both of them. I just want to choose both of them using Alt. Uh, let's see, Alt. And I want to add the text of 3XL, make it bigger. And then when we hover over it, I want to change the scale to 125. And then I want to add a transition, transition on transform. Form. It means when the scale change, just add the transition. And then I want to make a duration of 200 with the ease out effect. I think that's it. And it's too close here. So I want to add some flex, it make an item center. And then, so that's for here. And then here at the top, I want to add some padding in the X of four, adding in the top of four, okay? So that's it. Now when we click on it, I wanna add the like, okay? So that's the next step. And if you wanna be sure that other is working, we can just add, change the initial value of false to true. So you can see that the like is going to be, okay, now it's actually checking that one, so we cannot do it. So let's add the functionality of adding the likes. So here I want to add an onclick event listener, which is going to call a function called like post. And also for this one as well, because we want to uh, uh, create it in both sides. So here at, at the bottom, we want to create that function. This is going to be synchronous, a synchronous function called like post. So if this one has liked already, we want to remove the like. If it doesn't have, we want to add the like. So this one is going to use a method called delete, delete doc, which is from Firebase forward slash Firestore. Then we want to uh, search for the doc, which is Firebase Firestore. And then we want to pass the DB hosts and then we want to add the ID because we want to add uh, the ID there. So we just say, we go to this likes collection. We want to pass the ID, which is the session. We want to protect that, that user, that UID. So this is for the, when it has a like, we want to delete the like, but in case it doesn't have the like, so let's uh, make it close this, add an else. So here we want to set the doc, not delete the doc. So we just say set doc from Firebase for slash Firestore. We pass the doc, db post id likes, and then the id. Okay, that's it. Let's close this. Uh, let's see what, okay, we need to have another parenthesis. Okay. 
So let's see what we get. Let's try it. Now I'm going to click on this. Let's see the error. Set doc call with invalid data. So here set doc. Uh, so doc db post id likes session user uid. So something here is undefined actually. Let's try again. Let's actually refresh the page. So post. And that's the ID. I think we put some extra parentheses here. Uh, no, that's it for this one. So let's console log. So why we don't get some of this information here. So we have DB and session. So what is missing here? The DB is we are getting here. That's fine. And uh, post ID we are getting. So actually we need to add some extra information here because we're adding a document, so it cannot be empty. So we can just add something like timestamp or the username. So I'm just want to add the username here. Now we, if we check our website and we like the post like this, and then if you check our document, we can see that in this post, which is a post tree, we have likes and inside the likes we have the user ID and then we have the username now and if you try to remove that you just click on it now that collection is completely removed so if you have one and then we can we can log out and log in with another person and then we can try to have two likes for example we just go I think we locked it with quote this hand let's log in with this email and we like it again. Now we have two likes, as you can see. Okay, so now we have the likes functionality. We want to see the number of likes here. So after this heart icon, so we want to see the number of likes. So after here, I just want to say if the likes length is more than zero, then uh, let's. We just say we will make it like this. Uh, I don't want to make it bold. Actually, let's make it just a text gray 500. And then I want to see if the number of likes is one. I want to make it say likes like if it's more than one. I want to say likes like this. And let's close this. We don't need this now. So now we have two likes. Let's add some gap between them i just say gap two okay so now we have one like two likes here one like one like so in the database we see that we have two likes here we come back in this one we have only one like okay i hope you got the procedure so we got the likes all of them from the database with this use effect with this one we define that if the person is already liked it or not by checking the index and then we have liked the user using this function if it has a like we want to remove it if it doesn't have we want to set it back and then based on the has like status we want to show that uh, two icons a heart or outline lock a heart and then we want to show the number of likes here. So let's add this one to the GitHub. So this, this is add like functionality to the post part. Let's add everything and then commit and push it. So in the next section, we're going to work on the comment functionality. We want to show the number of, show the comments here. And also we want to have an inbox to be able to add comments. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have completed the like functionality of the postcard. In this section, we're going to work on the comment section functionality. So look at, if you look at the final version, we have this scrollable comment section showing the username, image, and also we have that the time of the comment so we can 
show this comment using a package called react moment and also we have this search uh, this inbox we can just write down something here for example nice we press enter and it comes at the beginning of the comments like this we get this image from the session so that's fine we get the session and then we're gonna create uh, we're gonna have a use effect and get this comments here so let's go to the postcard post.jsx so after this caption this paragraph we want to add a comment section let's create a file called inside the components let's create a component called comment section the jsx let's create a react functional component and then add it here we just need to pass the id of the post here as well it's similar to the like section so let's go to the comment section first we want to add the search uh, the inbox so we want to see that inbox only if the person is logged in so here inside uh, first thing first as a, we are using use session we need to use the client side so use client and then we're going to import use session from uh, next dash auth react and then we're going to get the data change the name to session and here we're going to add a form but first we want to if the, there is a session we want to see that form so here inside this we're going to have a form we don't need action for this form and we want to have the image of the user which we get from the session we just say session dot user dot image let's see what we get here so far final version okay we got the image here the alternative is just the user image okay uh, let's install this quickly so height of 10 weight of 10 rounded full and then we want to have some border padding of four pixels and then we want to make it object cover to keep the aspect ratio so after this image we're gonna have the input so the input is going to be with a type of text we want to have a piece of state to keep the changes in the key input so this is going to be comment set comment it's going to be an empty string first and then we want to keep the change here so the value here is going to be comment and when we change it we want to set the comment to e.target.value so the tr keep the keep track the changes and also we need to import use the state here we should see the input somewhere here okay so we need to add some placeholder to see it better add a comment or enter a comment that's fine and we add some a style to that i want to remove the outline that is okay border none that's fine flex one it's fine yeah everything is okay and we want to bring them next to each other so in the form i want to make it flex item center and we add a padding of four and gap of two okay and also we want to add some button at the end so there is a button here it's going to be disabled if there is nothing in the comment and then we want to uh, the type is going to be submit we want to submit the form and then also we want to have some style to that so when it is disabled i want to make it cursor not allowed and also when it's disabled i want to make the text to be gray let's close this okay let's see what we get okay now it's post and then when we write something it's going to be blue let's uh, make it a little bit smaller or change this uh, remove this font semi bold I, mean, I think it's better okay so this is for the button now we want to when we submit submit this form we want to add it to the database so what we need to do here we have this comment 
Now we want to just submit it. So when we submit the form, when we press enter or click on this button, we're going to submit this form. Yeah. So when we submit it, we want to add it to the database. So here we're going to have an unsubmit event listener, which is going to call a function called handle submit. And then we're going to create the function here at the top. It, it is going to be asynchronous. And then we want to prevent refreshing the page when we submit it. So we add e.prevent default here. And then we set the comment to be empty when we do that. So before making it empty, we want to add it to the Firebase. So here we just create uh, a wait. And we want to use add doc method from Firebase forward slash Firestore. And then we have collection. We need to import that. Then we have db post id comments. And then we want to add that comment, which is this comment. And then username. We need to protect it. Maybe there is no session. And then we want to add the user image. And then finally, we want to add the timestamp using server timestamp from Firebase Firestore. So that is fine. And also we need to close this. And these, we need to get this DB. So import app from Firespace. And then we, not, we need to initialize it. We need to import get store as well. Okay, so everything, I think it's ready. We can just try that. Just say hello. And press enter. We get an error. ID is not defined. So we get the, we need to get the ID from the prop. Okay. Let's try again. Hello. Okay. Now it's working. And also it's been removed as well. So let's see what we get. So let's go back to our post. That was this post, post three. Now we have comments. We have one comment and it's hello with this username, user image and timestamp. As you can see, we are getting some kind of delay here. For example, we, uh, let's, when we write down something, for example, nice and we press enter, it's kind of a little bit slow sometimes. So in order to fix that, we can set this comment at the top, quickly remove that. But before doing that, we want to set that comment to a new one. For example, we just say comment to post. And we set it to that comment and then we use that one here. So we quickly remove that. So it's going to be a little bit visually faster. So now if we write down something like hello, we press enter, suddenly it's gone. And, but it takes time to be added to the database, but that is okay. We want to have uh, a better user experience for uh, the browser side. Okay. Now we are posted the comments. We want to see the comments at the top. So we just need to add a use effect react hook to get the comments. We need to import it from react. And once we have some change in the DB, we want to do that. And also we want to have a piece of state for all the comments and which is going to be an empty string from the beginning. So now we have these comments. We want to fill it up here. So here we're going to have that a snapshot on snapshot from Firebase Firestore. We want to have some query. If you remember, we had some query before we can add it inside. So we're going to add some parentheses and then query from Firebase Firestore. And then we're going to set the query between the collections. We need to import collections. That's, I think we already imported and then we pass the DB the name of the collection, we pass the ID and then the comments. We get the snapshot and then set the comments to that snapshot.docs. So now we have all the comments inside this comments. So we want to show it here. So before this form, we want to add another things for the comments. So we just say, if there is a comment or if the comments dot length is more than zero, then just loop through the comments and show it. Actually, we can accept all of them. Uh, we want to add some padding 
let's accept all of them and then I want to explain what I made here. So we still cannot see the comments. Now the comments came, as you can see. So we need to just fix it a little bit here. We don't need this padding here. I want to add a margin in the x-axis of 10. And we want to set the maximum height to be 24. Let's remove that. As you can see, it's scrollable as well. That's fine. So we got each comment and we added like a key for that one. I think this key is going to give us some error later, but because the comment doesn't have any ID for us, we can just get the ID here and then we pass the ID here. I think I had some issue before. So these are okay. We're going to have a, a space between them. Item center. We, let's add some margin at the bottom of two. Then we have the image of the user, which is coming from comment.data.userImage. And then we have a styling here, rounded full. We can make it object cover to keep the aspect ratio. We can add some border as well. So make it cooler. In this one should be overflow Y scrollable. As you can see now. And the other things we want to add is this. Uh, we added the comment. So we made it bold here. I want to make the color to be gray. Text gray. For example, 700. Or let's make this one 500. Now this one 700. Mix the comment. So this is the, for this one, let's, uh, they're all together. So this is a spam. I think it's okay now. Let's check the final version. It's a little bit, this one is different, but it's fine. So that's it for the, this section. I want to add the timestamp so we know when the comment is added. So in order to do that, we need to install a package. So I'm going to open a new terminal here. I'm going to install a package called uh, react moment i i believe so it's react dash moment so once we have that one we need to import it at the top so we're going to import you just need to import it like that as a default from react moment so let's accept this one first see what we get okay so we get this eight minutes ago or something like that. So let's add a new one. Hello. New comment. Uh, it's going to the, it's been added at the end actually. So we're going to fix that one soon. We need to add an order by. So first let's uh, just make the order correctly. I want to make this one to the right side. So, so moment, uh, I think the styling is fine. Gray, everything is okay. We just want to bring it to the right side. I think uh, this step that is covering all of them, I just want to add justify between. And then I want to bring this one to the left side. So this step, we can just change the flex to one. So that's fine. And then we want to add some, some space at the right side. So we just say margin right one, for example or two, or we can just, I think padding right is correct. Okay, that's fine. And also when the, this uh, comment is a bit long, I wanna make it truncated. So I wanna add truncate here. So when we have a long comment, so this is a long comment for this post. Ah, where did it go? It went here. So, so as you can see, we just, truncated here. So now I want to actually show the new one at the beginning. So in this use effect, that is we are fetching data. We didn't add the order by, so we need to add or order by here. So after this collection, we add something called order by from Firebase. And then we want to order by time stamp, time stamp. Let me check. So we don't need T at the end. 
and then we have the sending okay let's refresh the page okay now let's add something here new comment okay now it came to the beginning okay let's test it with another person and uh, like uh, let's sign out and log in with another person new comment from new person okay it came at the beginning as you can see the image is correct the username and this is the comment it looks okay all right that's it for our project i think the functionalities so uh, let me know what you think about the projects and what you want to see in these projects or if you want to see more functionalities let me know in the next section we're going to work on deployment of our project so let's add this one first to the github that was add comment section add comment functionality functionality to the post card can commit and push so see in the next section for the comment uh, for the deployment of our project now let's go to our uh, hostinger dashboard as you can remember we have purchased a vps there now we want to go to our access control and add our website to this panel so we just need to go to the panel access here and this is the login url of your panel the username is admin and you have assigned a password before if you remember you need to use the same password so you just use this one uh, if you get these kind of things you just say proceed because uh, uh, this is a browser warning for you that's fine we can just proceed and use the username is going to be admin we just choose the password we can log in now let me try again okay now we are inside our admin dashboard so the next step is to create a new site so i already created a site for our previous project you can click on add site to add a new one as we are using next.js we need to create a node.js site so we click on this one and here we want to add our domain and uh, choose our site user and also we see the password and the port number so we don't have the domain yet we need to set the domain so i already have a domain with google so let me go to my domains first let me choose my gmail account this is my domain you need to go to dns and create a new domain for yourself so before creating the domain you need to note your uh, ip address this one is going to give you in the next session so you just put the name here for example i want to just say insta dash next dash v2 for example dot hundred js projects dot com okay and then for the site user i just want to call it insta so i'm going to copy this one so i can remember this is going to be insta and then we can create it so we need to wait until the creation is completed all right so now the site has been created so what we want to do is to click on manage and then here as you can see now we have this ip address i have to copy this ip address go to my google domain i want to add a new custom record so this is going to be that uh, sorry insta dash i think it was insta dash next dash v2 should be the same name and then here this is going to be that ip address and for this one i just use a so once you just choose it you can just save it okay now we, i have it in my record so where is it insta next v2 okay we already have it here so now now we want to make the ssl ssl is kind of certificate for your website and make show that it's secure so we just go to the ssl 
and we want to create a new one. We just click on actions and click on new let's encrypt certificate. So as you see, he said a DNS record pointing to server is required. So we already have the DNS in our record. So we don't need to worry about that. And then we just click on create, create and install. So now this one is completed. Now we need to come back to our website. We want to build this application. So I'm going to open the terminal. Let me just delete this one. I want to stop this one, clear this. So we want to build the application. So what I mean by build, you can use npn run build or yarn build to build your application. So I'm just say npm run build to build it. This is going to build it. And then we need to wait until all the files are ready. So what we do is we go to the file location. If you remember, we have created in desktop, I uh, think it's project and then Insta next. So we have now the, it's already built this application. We need to choose everything except this node modules. So I'm going to just uh, see it like this. We want to choose everything and then except the node modules, we want to choose all of them. And then we want to compress that. So we just say compress. And then we want to drag this file and bring it to our panel. So let's come back to our panel. We need to go to file manager. After that, we need to choose our HD docs here. We choose our website Insta next to. And now, now we need to drag the file and bring it here. So uh, we just go here, we drag it, bring it here, and paste it here. And this is going to upload it. After the upload, we need to extract this. Just right click and extract. And we need to choose the directory, which is forward slash. We want to put it just in the root directory. So we ex extract it. All the files are here now. Now we need to create our SSH keys to be able to connect to our website by our terminal. So we need to come back to our panel and make sure you come back and then click on settings. And then here you just go to SSH keys. Once you're here, so we need to add the SSH key. So first we need to produce it. So we come back to our code. Let's clear this. And here we're going to have this code SSH dash Keegan dash T R S A. Once you have that one, this is going to ask you which file name you want. I just want to say Sahand, for example, and then we just press enter. And then now this is going to create a file here called Sahand.pop. And this is going to be our SSH key. So I'm going to copy this. And then we're going to come back and paste it here inside this. So the name is going to be Sahand. And then the SSK key, we just need to paste all of them. And then we press add SSH key. So this is going to create us the SSH key and using this key, and then we can connect to our panel and uh, run the commands in our terminal and make our website up and running. Okay, it's already created here. You can see now, now we need to go to overview here and then we go to SSH access. So we just copy this and we paste it here. So this is going to ask us some questions. That is very simple. We just need to add yes here. And then for the password, we're going to pass uh, our password that we have created for the admin. So now we are inside our cloud panel. So what we want to do here, we just want to type sudo su dash the name of your domain. If you just check here in your control panel, if you remember here, uh, let me show you. 
in your control panel inside the setting remember your site user is insta for, for me it was insta you just whatever your site user is you just write down here so once you have that one you just press enter and this is going to go inside that as you can see after that we can just go inside the htdocs here you if you do ls you can see that we have this website we can go inside that by just saying cd press tab now we are inside that one we can just use L ls to see what we have here as you can see we have the archive file that we dragged inside the control panel and then we have the other files like public and src so this is the place that we want to run our application we want to install everything we want to uh, build everything so here we're going to run npn install first and then we want to have some other things like npm run build and npm start so but we want to do that in the production mode so i'm going to show you what to do so first we wait for the installation the installation is completed now we want to write down this one node underline env equals production npm run build okay so this is for the npm run build here and then we need to do the same things for npm start okay now it's completed we just run the npm start again with the same production mode npm start so this is going to run our website okay it's running now so if you check now our website in the browser let me check that that's my domain as you can see we have our website running and working as you can see so let's just uh, log in the only problem is logging we need to fix this problem here because we don't have any environmental variables for our website we're going to fix that but before that i want to show some other problem for example here if i stop the server and if i refresh the page as you can see we don't have our website because we need to always run our website inside the terminal in order to prevent that we need to install another package called pm2 so we're going to install that we use npm install pm2 at latest and we want to install it globally we just say dash g so this is going to install this package pm2 and also in order to run our application we need to run in other things like pm2 start npm dash name and etc so i'm going to show you what i what i mean by that so the installation is completed now we just need to run pm2 start npm dash dash name insta for me is insta and dash dash start and we can just say pm2 save let's see if it's working let's refresh the page i think we have some problem here i think i need to choose the name insta dash next i'm not sure let me try again oh uh, sorry that that start actually has a space before that so it should be like this so now let's use pm to save okay now let's refresh the page as you can see now it's working even without using npn start in our application so in order to fix the problem related to this sign in as you can see when we sign in we get some error about the next secret we need to add the environmental variable file in our panel so now we need to go to our control panel here we go to file manager and then we go to htdocs to our website and also here we, know we need to create a new file and we want to call this file dot env and we press add so we cannot see the file now we need to refresh the page so refresh the page now 
we go to htdocs again and then now we see a file called .env. We open that, we go to our code, we just go to .env, whatever we have here, we just copy and we paste it here and we press save. Uh, let's try again in our website. We come back now in our homepage and let's log in. We still have some problem here. Maybe it takes time to be cleared. Because the file, everything is being, uh, is getting from the server. So the Firebase is working. Only the next authentication is not working. Uh, we need to actually go to the control panel, uh, file manager. So we just go to the HC docs and we need to go to our SRC app directory, API, all next and route JS. And we want to, after this callback, we want to add a secret as well because we don't have it here. So we just say secret equals to process.env. Remember that we just use next of secret. We need to add this one dot next of secret. And just we need to close that. So let's save this one and we try again. Uh, it's still not working. Let me stop the video and check it. All right, I've checked the problem. Actually, you just need to add the next public at the beginning of the, this secret. Here, you just save it. And then you just go to the file manager, go to your HC docs, SRC, app, API off. And then here, you're gonna add that next public at the beginning of this one as well. And then this is going to work for you. As you can see, it's working as expected. We can try to add a new image. For example, we just say nice flower. And when we press on upload post, this is going to upload inside here. We can leave a comment to say hello. As you can see, it's working fine. We can like or dislike. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things about this project. So let me know your opinion about the project in the comment section and give me some feedback. And if you want to see more projects like this, let me know in the comment section. So see you in the next project.